In today's game, being able to go on offense with your dinks is super important, especially on your backhand side. Usually, your opponents are gonna target your backhand because it's just assumed that your backhand is the weaker side. Most players, because the backhand is on the non-dominant side, have a tougher time hitting it. But today, I'm gonna to teach you guys a dink that's gonna allow you to go on offense with your backhand and dictate the point from the kitchen line. Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how to hit a two-handed backhand dink. A two-handed backhand dink is, like the name suggests, a backhand dink that you're hitting with two hands. This is going to be more aggressive. You're going to be able to get more topspin on it than a one-handed backhand dink. And this is great if you really want to dominate the point, dictate where the ball is going, and move your opponent around, so that way you can set yourself up for a pop-up, an opportunity to speed up and then end the point so you can score or get a side out. The first thing that we're going to talk about with the two-handed backhand dink is the grip. I want to make sure that you guys are holding the paddle the right way. We're going to have, again, two hands on the paddle, so we're going to have a different grip with each hand. So our bottom hand is going to be in what's called a continental grip, or a hammer grip more colloquially. This is where you're going to be holding the paddle as if you were hammering a nail into the ground. The technical way to make sure that you have this grip is if you were to put the V of your hand on the side of the paddle, run it straight down so that the edge comes between your thumb and your index finger, come down to the grip, and then grab. That's your continental grip right there. That's all you need to know to be able to find this grip at any time. Next, we're gonna put our top hand on. Our top hand is gonna be in an Eastern grip. So that's where we're gonna take our hand this way, palm to the paddle handle, and then our first knuckle should be lined up with this flat part of the paddle right here. So I'm gonna take my hand, put it on top, so that my first knuckle lines up right on top with that flat part of the paddle. Now, an important thing to note here, my hands are touching, but they're not overlapping. A very common mistake that I see among beginner and intermediate players is they'll overlap their hands like this when they're hitting a two-handed backhand. Whether it's a dink, volley, drive, or return, we don't want our hands to overlap. We want them to be separate. You're not gonna get the most out of your shot if you're overlapping your hands. So we want them to be touching, but we don't want our fingers interlapped or interlocked. So next, if you're playing with a paddle that has an extended handle, like my Yola Perseus here, you should be able to have enough room where you can just grab the paddle like so with your index finger wrapping around the top of the throat. But if you have a paddle with a shorter handle, what you can do is put your index finger up top this way. So that allows you to choke up with your non-dominant hand. So that way you can comfortably fit both hands on the paddle. Either way is fine. There are plenty of paddle players that do either. You can do this or you could do this. The choice is yours, whichever is more comfortable as long as your hands aren't overlapping or your fingers aren't interlocking. So if you need more room, finger up. If you're comfortable without needing more room, you can go finger down. I prefer to go with my finger down because both my hands can comfortably fit on the handle of this paddle. I personally feel like this is more comfortable for me, but everybody's different. There's no right or wrong way here. So now for the swing, there are a couple key things to note. One, we're gonna use this as an offensive shot to get some topspin on it. So what I wanna make sure that I'm doing is getting down low under the ball. So I'm gonna bend my knees. I'm gonna drop the paddle tip under where the ball is gonna be. This way, I can come from under and up to create my topspin. The swing power is gonna be coming from my left side. I'm gonna be able to, I wanna generate the power with my left hand. I'm gonna be coming under and up with my left hand creating the power. My right hand is just there as a guide. So I'm not gonna be pulling across it. I wanna be pushing with my left hand. And then I'm gonna follow through up above the level of the net. So I'm gonna brush up low to high. Now the final thing to note is that you don't wanna use this two-handed backhand dink when you're stretched out of position. That's because you don't have as much room to hit. When you put two hands on the paddle, you can't stretch out or reach as far. So if I want to get a ball that's all the way off to my left side as a righty, it's going to be more efficient to take one hand and do this and reach than if I have two hands, my paddle comes back a little bit. So it's going to always be more efficient to get these super wide balls with one hand. So this shot, we really want to use if we have a neutral ball or defensive dead dink that we want to attack, put some topspin on, and try to start to dictate the point to set ourselves up for a put away. We don't want to use this shot if we're stretched and have to go on defense. That might cause a pop-up, a miss hit, or just an outright error. 